Hey all, welcome to Shared Tech where science meets investing and I'm your host Raj. Friends, in today's video, I'm commencing something new. A quarterly fundamental analysis series. By diving first into CRISPR therapeutics, I'll cover other companies subsequently. This company is a bellwether in the gene editing space and the core developer of CAS theory, the first approved CRISPR therapy. And as you know, I shy away from fundamentals. It has not been my comfort zone, but this year I'm determined to become good at it. So I've taken data from Yahoo Finance and I've analyzed key financial data to understand what the numbers mean and to answer the main question, whether the current stock price reflects opportunity or risk. As always, my friends, I value your time, so I'll keep this clear and to the point. Let's get started. Thanks, friends. As of May 31st, 2025, CRISPR is trading around 36 to 38 per share approximately. That gives it a market cap of around $3.1 billion. This company is not a profitable company yet, so the valuation must be considered through the lens of future potential, balance sheet strength, and the cash runway that it has to continue making its uh, pipeline progress. What the business is earning and spending is the next thing I want to look at. So let's break down the numbers. First, I would like to talk revenue. CRISPR Therapeutics generated 35 million in revenue over the training 12 months. This is flat compared to the previous year, which also came in at 35 million. Most of this likely reflects early stage manufacturing royalties or cost sharing from the cash revenue launch. Next, let us look at the cost of revenue. This came in at approximately $121 million. These costs likely include initial manufacturing scale-ups for cash levy, clinical trial expenses for the programs that are in the pipeline, and this results in a negative gross margin of minus $86 million, which is typical for emerging biotech firms where cost precedes revenue. And operating losses improved year over year. In 2023, uh, they came in at around 693 million of losses. 2024 saw it reduced to 474 million, and that's a significant narrowing of losses of nearly 200 million improvement. The net loss also shrank. In 2023, the net loss was 650 million, which came down to 386 million in 2024. This suggests that the company is managing costs better while progressing through clinical milestones and also monetizing cash revenue. If you look at EPS per share, Basic and diluted EPS stands at negative 4.49, down from negative 8.36 in 2022, which again is a notable improvement. So the company is getting better with every year. And now I'm taking a look at the balance sheet to see if the company is financially secure. And I think this is the place where CRISPR Therapeutics really shines other companies. Cash and short-term assets reported by CRISPR is about $2.24 billion in total assets. Its working capital is roughly $1.9 billion, giving it a very strong liquidity position. If you look at debt, again, a sterling position for CRISPR therapeutics because it carries no long-term debt, which is a big positive. This gives them flexibility and reduces future interest burden. Now let us look at the burn rate. With an annual operating loss near $450 million, the company has an estimated runway, cash runway, of around two to three years. This is very robust considering the biotech standards of other companies that we have seen in our watch list. Now, EPS, so total equity is around 2.3 billion or approximately 86 million share. That gives us roughly an equity per share estimate of around $27 per share. This is a good reference point. With the stock, the stock trading at around 36 to 38 percent, I think investors are paying a premium of around 40 percent over book value. Uh, implied confidence on the IP and the pipeline probably is what uh, allows for this. And if you look at the valuation ra ratios, price to sales ratio at 89.9x, that's extremely high. But again, this is typical when revenue is small and long-term value is based on the pipeline potential. So it's not a meaningful um, aspect to look at. Next, let's look at enterprise value by revenue, which came in at 44.2x, which is a high multiple. And if you look at what it was in March 2024, it was 35.8 times. And in 2023, it was 13.7 times. So you can see that from an enterprise uh, value perspective also, the stock is becoming more and more expensive. But one has to keep that in mind while trying to take a position in this stock at this point of time. 
Forward PE is not meaningful for this company because it's got negative earnings. So with that in mind, the question then is, what should I uh, watch for? I think here are the three key questions that I will keep in mind with regard to CRISPR therapeutics. Cash driven commercial rollout. How quickly can sales scale? And how will that impact revenue in 2025, 2026? So that's one aspect I would like to investigate further. I also like to look at what happens with CTX310 and CTX320. Will base editing move into the clinic? Each program is a potential game changer. Likewise for CTX211, uh, I think for type 1 diabetes. Next, looking at cash burn discipline, I think uh, CRISPR is managing R&D and uh, general expenses very carefully while keeping the pipeline moving at a rapid pace. So where does all of this leave us? Well, my conclusion after looking at all of this is that CRISPR therapeutics is a cash-rich, debt-free, uh, early commercial biotech with globally approved product and an ambitious gene editing pipeline. Remember, recently they added the uh, siRNA aspect also. But the company is not cheap on a traditional basis, but then again, neither is revolutionary science. I will keep tracking CRISPR therapeutics quarterly results and update you each time new data comes out. I'm sure that I might have made some mistakes out here. So if you spot any mistake, please mention it in a nice manner in the comment section so that I can take note of it for future analysis that I might do. But overall, qualitatively, I would say that CRISPR Therapeutics earlier was a good company, not only in terms of the rich pipeline, its collaborations, uh, and the monetized cash revenue. But now it is even better uh, because it has also got siRNA into its portfolio, which expands its area of uh, influence. So I think that makes it a very good company. However, there's a 40% premium if you look at the book value. So you have to think for yourself whether you want to give a 40% premium or you'd wait for it to get into attractive valuation. So friends, that was my summary. If you found this breakdown helpful, please drop a comment with your questions and subscribe to ShareTrek for more analysis like this. Thank you for watching and indulging me while I develop this channel and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.